All right, folks, in today's video, we're going to take a look at this Cellwave DL200 dummy load. What you can tell immediately by looking at it, it is some large heat sinks. And what you use this product for is to feed a signal into this device here through this end connector. And then the signal is essentially absorbed by this device as opposed to being radiated via an antenna. What makes this device unique is it has an RF tap here, which will allow you to monitor the signal that you are feeding here. This signal is attenuated by 30 dB. We'll take a look at the website where I got this on eBay. It was sold as new, but this does look to me like it's in used condition. One of the things you'll notice, it has multiple taps along both sides, so this can be mounted into a device. This is an N-type connector. This product is good from 0 hertz all the way up to 2 gigahertz, and that's probably why they use this N-type connector. And then the tap is a BNC connector. There isn't much to it. Let's go ahead and hook this up and show you a use case for why you may or may not need a dummy load. PCBWay invites you to participate in the Share Your Feedback activity. Amazed by customer creativity and photography skills, PCB Way invites you to share your best shots. Submissions are accepted through 123121. Then PCB Way will review the feedback with a winner selected on January 14th, 2022. Multiple prize packs are available with a $500 grand prize. Entering is easy. The first way is through your account, orders, manage feedback, and leave feedback. Alternatively, you can submit via Twitter and Instagram. Tag your photo at PCBWay and use the hashtag ShotWithPCBWay. So for this demonstration, we are using the ICOM IC705. It is running off of a UPS, so I'm not using its internal battery. That way we'll be able to generate 10 watts of power output. And we want to measure that. So I've taken the output of this radio and I'm feeding it into this SWR and power meter. From the SWR and power meter, I'm taking the signal out and feeding it into the dummy load. Now I do have some cables here and I do have some connectors, but we just want to do a quick test to see what our power outputs are. And this is a reason why you may want to use a dummy load. Test, 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 test. So when we did that, you can see on the meter that it was going up to 10 watts. We are set on the 15 watt scale and our function is set to power. Test, 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 test. And that test was successful. Let's also see if this is a 50 ohm load. If that's the case, our SWR should remain flat here. Test, test, test. And you can see the SWR remains flat. I also use the Nano VNA to do a sweep from 50 kilohertz to 900 megahertz, an SWR sweep. And then you can see here, the yellow line at the bottom of the Nano VNA is relatively flat, indicating a one-to-one -one SWR across the entire spectrum. Now I know I said I was going to do this test with a spectrum analyzer, but I chose to do it with a nano VNA because more people have nano VNAs and they're more approachable than spectrum analyzers at this point in time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a test where we have a signal come out of channel one. It's called a through test and it's going to go through these coax cables that you see everywhere and into channel zero. And then I have them connected here through this configuration. Now, before everybody gets crazy, I did a through calibration with this particular configuration to minimize any reactance from any of these adapters or these coaxial cables. Here we have a sweep that goes from 50 megahertz to 900 megahertz. And then you can see our line here is close to 0 dB all the way across the board. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the center connector and then I'm going to put a 30 dB attenuator in place and you'll be able to see the difference.
Okay, now with our attenuator in place, our 30 dB attenuator, you can see that our signal has dropped from this line 10, 10, 30 dB down. And as I scroll through here, you should see this number here, which is saying around 29.4 dB. Now we do have some funkiness down here at the end, and that is likely a result of using different adapters and a little bit of a different adapter configuration here. You see things like that at higher frequencies with consumer grade equipment versus lab grade equipment. Let's go ahead and do this same test using the cell wave instead of this attenuator. When we do this, we need to make sure that our channel one is going into the antenna input and then the output from the tap is going into channel zero. I'm going to go ahead and configure that now. That is definitely not the result that I expected to see. I'm a little confused and a little perplexed. I'm gonna go ahead and troubleshoot this and we'll come back and take another look at it. I wasn't able to get the trace on the Nano VNA to reflect the trace that we got with the attenuator. So I decided to hook it up to the Siglin Spectrum Analyzer. And as you can see here, the results are similar. I do not have a consistent 30 dB attenuation across the spectrum. In this particular sweep, we go all the way up to 2.1 gigahertz, which is beyond the capabilities or the rating on the cell wave dummy load. It only goes to 2 gigahertz. But in any event, we should have had this line be more flat across the wider pieces of the spectrum. All right, so what are we going to say about this dummy load? Um, it was cheap. It was $29 plus shipping. I think I ended up paying around $42 to have it here, which is relatively inexpensive for a 100 watt dummy load or 200 watt PEP, 100 watt continuous dummy load like this one. So I'm not upset that I bought it because of that. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I'm testing it incorrectly, but this 30 dB attenuator or pad just doesn't seem to work for me. Maybe this is a damaged unit. Um, it was supposed to be new. This clearly looks used to me. Uh, I'm not upset about that. I do wish the attenuation worked better, but I have other attenuators, so it's not that big of a deal for me. Would I recommend you buy this? No, I wouldn't. Unless you wanted to get a cheap dummy load um, that you're also going to have to buy an adapter for most in most cases. So... That's really it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and link them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks again.